to lift up your voices and your hands to the Lord. So let's just take some time, forget about what's going on in your week, forget about what's going on in the things around you, your to-do list, and let's just lift up our voices and our praises to our God. Let's worship together.
just continue to worship him tonight. Just lift your voices.
Isn't it so awesome to have a God who never fails you, who never forgets you, who is always faithful, he is always present, he is always true, and he is always kind. And we get the opportunity to come into this place and lift up our praises to him because of who he is. You know, it's so easy nowadays to get wrapped up in anxiety and fear. This world can look crazy sometimes, but we have a God who sees all, who knows all, and who is always with us. In Matthew 6, it says, therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on, is not life more than food and the body more than clothing. Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns and yet your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you by being anxious can add a single hour to his span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow they neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not be anxious, saying, what shall I wear or what shall we drink or what shall we do? For the Gentiles seek after all these things and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. Did you know, this is something that I've been looking into because you know, I struggle with anxiety just like I'm sure a lot of you. Did you know that our brain can not process anxiety and gratitude at the same time. So that tells me that I get the opportunity to choose. Am I gonna focus on the anxiety or am I gonna focus on gratitude and thankfulness and who my God is? So in this moment that we get in the middle of the week, when things might be crazy, work might be nuts, your kids might be driving you crazy, we get a time to sit in his presence and to thank him for who he is. So as we sing this next song, I want you to remember, I want you to remember that your brain can focus on anxiety and fear or it can focus on thankfulness it can focus on the Lord and who he is. So let's just spend this time lifting up our voices, putting else, everything else to the side and thanking him and praising him. Let's sing this next song together.
Y'all go ahead and be seated real quick. I'm, gonna, I'm not giving you much time, but uh, I'm going to give you about five minutes. Man, like the psalmist said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Man, I, if y'all hadn't heard anything today, man, I have worshiped Jesus tonight, and man, I hope you have as well. Uh, give me five minutes of your time very, very quickly. It's so cool. I'm going to speak to you today just from Psalm 150. Now, you see God's in the details. God is in the details because I didn't know Bianca was going to show a video about Psalm 150. I was sitting in my office, and I was thinking, man, God, what can I speak about on night of worship? And Psalm 50 was just laid on my heart. And so I'm going to read it. I'm going to give you four points about it. So if you want to take notes, you can. If you want to turn, open up your devices and turn to Psalm 50, you can do that. But it's going to be very, very quick. It's not a sermon today. It's just a little devotion to kind of get you guys going for the second half of worship, okay? So here we go. Uh, Psalm 150 says this, praise the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary, praise him in his mighty heavens, praise him for his mighty deeds, praise him according to his excellent greatness, praise him with trumpet sound, praise him with the lute and harp, praise him with the tambourine and dance, praise him with strings and pipe, praise him with sounding cymbals, praise him with loud clashing cymbals, let everything that has breath Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. So the first thing I want you to see tonight, and very, very quickly is the focus of our worship. The focus of our worship. The focus, the focus of our worship is the Lord. Listen, 13 times in six verses, the psalmist says, praise. Praise him, praise the Lord, praise him. See, the focus should not be about us. I was listening to a reel today, and Francis Chan said this. If you ever leave a church service saying, I did not worship today, or I did not get anything out of worship, you should never say that. Because you know what? Worship is not about us. Worship is about the Lord. We're here not to worship or sit next to someone or think who's next to me. We're here to solely focus on the Lord. That's what the psalmist said. Focus on on the Lord. Right there in verse 1, praise the Lord. At the end of the chapter, praise the Lord. Our praise should be solely focused on the Lord. That's where our focus should be tonight. And every Sunday when we step in this place, we should focus on the Lord. Second thing we see is the places of our worship. You see right there it says, praise him in the sanctuary and praise him in the mighty heavens. Now listen to me. Tonight was pretty awesome. First half of this worship service was pretty awesome. In his sanctuary, the saints of God singing out, praising him was pretty awesome. Pretty incredible in my opinion, right? But you know what's even more incredible? Right now, if you read Revelation chapter 4, you read Revelation chapter 4, there's a worship service going on in the mighty heavens right now. Man, it, it doesn't even compare. People are around the throne, every tongue, every tribe around the throne of Jesus singing, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was, who is, and who is to come. Man, our worship should not only be in the sanctuary, but one day, one day when we take our last breath, we're going to be around the throne, and we're going to be praising God in the glorious heavens. And man, that is the day that I look forward to. But while I'm here on this earth, I'm going to praise him with everything I've got as well. So we praise him in the sanctuary, and we praise him in the heavens. The third thing we see is the theme of our worship. The theme of our worship, we see his acts, and we see his attributes. We see his acts, and it's just, listen to me, God has done a lot of acts in the Old Testament, but probably God's greatest act is when he sent his one and only son to die for us, to die for you and to die for me. So that what we just saying, so that we could trust him. That's probably the greatest act that he ever committed. Now listen to me, I have a son and there's no way I would send him for you to die. I love you guys, but I don't love you as much as God loves you. To send my only son to die for you, man, God loves you so much that if you were the only person on this earth, he would have sent his one and only son to die for you. And that's why we can trust him. That's why we can call him our Savior. Man, what a mighty act. And that's why we can worship. And as a tribute, man, this is so cool. You're talking about God being in the details about Psalm 150, and we picked the same thing. 
But I'm sitting at my desk desk yesterday, and I'm looking over this passage, and I'm thinking, man, what can I talk about attributes? And yesterday morning, I got a text, or our whole staff got a text from Chris Lohans, and this is what it said about his attributes. Listen to me. When you are confused about the future, you go to your Jehovah Ra, your caring shepherd. When you're anxious about provision, talk to Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who provides. Are your challenges too great? Seek the help of Jehovah Shalom, the Lord of peace. Is your body sick? Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals you, will see you know, see you now. Do you feel like a soldier behind enemy lines? Take refuge in Jehovah Nisa, the Lord is my banner. Praise him for his excellent greatness and his attributes. Man, he's acted and his attributes is worth praising tonight. And the last thing, we see the means of our worship. We see the means of our worship. It says, uh, the, the scripture says, uh, praise him with trumpet sound, praise him with lute and harp, praise him with tambourine and dance, praise him with the strings and pipe, praise him with sounding cymbals and loud clashing cymbals. You, and he says, everything that has breath, praise the Lord. I mean, we're up here with guitars, we're up here with strings, we're up here with keys, we're up here with cymbals, we're up here with drums, and we're praising him with everything we've got. We got a, a, a team that's using their gifts and abilities to praise the Lord with instruments, with dance, and with uh, our voices. That's what we praise him with. We praise him with everything that's within us. So if you have the ability to get up and you have the ability to jump around, the last song we're going to sing tonight is I Thank God. And it says he spun me around. If you have a chance to spin around, dance before the Lord tonight. It's okay to dance before the Lord. It's scripture. It says praise him with tambourine and dance. It's okay to dance before the Lord. It says praise him with loud cymbals, clashing cymbals. But this is the thing. If God has given you breath, God has given each one of you breath tonight. Everything, everything that has breath, praise the Lord. That's why we're here tonight, to worship him in all of his splendor and all of his majesty and all of his glory. That's why we're here tonight. So tonight's not only about just a little message, but it's also a time of prayer. And so October 20th, we're going to be going into a series that Pastor Jacob talked about this past Sunday called together. And together is just what it says. We're going to come together and we're going to pray for four fours. Every piece matters. The theme of it is every piece matter. Every piece of the puzzle, every person in our church matters. And that's what's about coming together. Four number one, four fours. The first four is for his glory. And so we're going to talk about for his glory. The second one is uh, is uh, for, the, for the church. The third one is for the mission, and the fourth one is for the future. So right now, whether you want to, to group together and, and just kind of pray, whatever you want to do, pray by yourself. I'm going to give you an opportunity to pray for those four things right now for his glory. Let's put it up there. For his glory. So I'm going to just kind of, you, you can read it. So right there where you're at, just bow your heads, read that, and pray for his glory that we would move into 2025 and beyond. We would have God's greatness as our truth, God's vision for our mission, God's power as our source, and God's glory for as our center in all we do. And for his church, for his church, pray that our church will gather more faithfully, grow more intentionally, give more sacrificially, and that God will enable us to fill our staff and upgrade facility needs.
and for the mission. For the mission, pray that God would give us wisdom on investing his resources well into the mission effort, missional effort of our church, our community, and the gospel and in church planning efforts of a church around the world. Pray for our people to serve our church in areas of need. And before you start praying that, I also want you to pray for this. Um, in October, our, our lead band is gonna have an opportunity to, to sing and worship and lead thousands of students in worship at Fields of Faith. So students, I challenge you tonight to pray for your student friends in your school that will attend that that evening. Pray that they would come to know the Lord if they need to, or just pray for a revival that would spark. Pray for the mission of our church. And lastly, pray for the future. Pray for the future that God will open up doors in our community, man, to just uh, for us to multiply campuses in an effort to reach more of our community in middle Georgia with the gospel, that we have people step in leadership pipelines and go around the world uh, and plant churches around the world. that's our heart's desire. God, is that this series will be more than just a series of being together, but God, that we will be committed, uh, Lord, to do things for your glory. God, to do things for, uh, for the church, Lord, that you would just, man, we would say, look what God has done, not look what we have done. God, we want to do everything, uh, Lord, and you get to receive the glory, not Shirley Hills Baptist Church. God, use our church where we work, we say it every week, where we work, where we live, and where we play. God, use us to impact your kingdom. Use the church. God, for our mission efforts, God, across our city, across our state, across the nation, Lord, across the world, God, we want to get to where we will multiply campuses, and God, we will plant churches, Lord, in the United States and all around the world. So God, you use your people to make that happen. And God, for the future, God, we give you the glory for what you're going to do. Lord, the best is yet to come, and we trust you in that. So God, you move through your people and we'll be careful to give you all the praise and all the glory for it all. We love you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Guys, uh, y'all go ahead, stand to your feet real quick. Uh, we're going to have another worship set, but we're going to have four more songs. Before the next three, man, we want to give you an opportunity to personally just pray, personally worship, personally do what God is calling you to do. Man, if you're here and life is throwing you a curveball and you're struggling, man, we have people with prayer lanyards on that'll be across the front row. Come grab somebody. Come to the altar. Grab them, and man, y'all pray together. And man, just do what God calls you to do. Maybe you're here, you're struggling with some sin. Maybe you're here tonight and you haven't trusted in God, man, and you need to be saved. We want to give you an opportunity to turn your life over to the Lord uh, right now. People will be across the front row. We got three songs. And then those three songs, man, if, God, if you, God leads you to come cry out at the altar and sing and worship him at the altar, you do that. But the last song is, be, is going to be a song of celebration as we go out celebrating God and what he has done in our lives. So you do what God calls you to do at this time over these next three songs. If you need a prayer, you come talk to us and we'll be glad to gather with you and pray. But you do what God leads you to do.
called Back to Life. We haven't done this one here before, so I know it's gonna be difficult to follow along for a little bit, but there's a part of this song that made me think of so many of you and the stories that I know that you have. See, in Galatians 2.20, it says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. 
and the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. The bridge of this song says, the enemy thought he had me, but Jesus said, you are mine. And I heard that and I saw so many faces of people I love in this place. And I said, we gotta sing this. This needs to be our anthem because he has no hold on us because Jesus says we are his. So let us walk that out. Let us sing to him because he's ours and we are his. Let's worship him together. No longer I who live, but Christ in me. For I've been born again, my heart is free. The hope of heaven before me, the grave behind. Hallelujah, you brought me back to life. I heard you call my name out of the grip of darkness and into the light of grace and just like Lazarus oh you brought me back to life and where there is dead religion now there is
wages to the land And all who've gone before us And all who will believe Will sing this song of ages to the land Cause your name is the highest Your name is the greatest Your name it stands above them all All thrones and dominions All powers and positions Your name It stands above them all And the angels cry Holy All creation cries so thankful to get to have this night with y'all. And I truly believe that God has done amazing things in this place. And we want to celebrate. Do y'all want to celebrate one last time and just lift up our voices in praise to the Lord?
All right, let's do this. Get excited. Let's do what Jason says and dance for him.
five are going to be even better. I'm just kidding. No, we are done. We are dismissed. This is an awesome opportunity that some people didn't get to be here tonight. But as we know, we say this all the time, we are sent. And I wanted to say it loud and proud tonight because we are sent from this space. Yes, we just worship and, and Jason spoke some, but we are sent here to, to show the world how good God is, how amazing he is and what he's done in our lives and what he's done on the cross for us. So let's say it all together. Shirley Hills. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for this time. Thank you so much for uh, giving us the opportunity just to be here and worship you. We love you. We, we pray all this in your name. Amen.